While the pandemic is keeping everyone apart, we have utilized the latest in technology to maintain our connectivity. Unprecedented times calls for unprecedented learning. Hello and welcome to One Troy at Home, the podcast all about teachers during a time of isolation and distance learning. I'm your host, Thomas Butcher, and today's guest is a science teacher at Athens High School. Welcome to the show, Rachel Peterson. Hello, and thank you for having me. Uh, This is going to be so much fun. If anyone, uh, you are my former uh, science teacher in high school, and it's just kind of hard to, I'm sure both of us wrap our heads around that. It's been almost 10 years at this point. It's been some time. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe we don't need to talk about that too much. Maybe it'll bring us down a little bit. But how is life going these days? How's everyone doing? It's it's good. It's challenging. Um, Challenge accepted. But uh, obviously, would much rather be in front of students, with students, um, doing laboratories, actual laboratories. So pretty much um, trying to recreate experiences the best we can. So what are the classes that you are teaching these days? I teach chemistry. And then I also teach uh, GBBE, which is genetics, bacteriology, biotechnology, and embryology. Do you have any seniors in those classes? I do. Um, I have a small handful of seniors in GBBE. And what's it been like trying to work with them as they finish up their, at this point they have finished up, but what was it like towards the end there? They were fantastic. Um, No complaints, no concerns. They're just phenomenal people all around. And um, in terms of encouraging them to finish up, they were so self-motivated. In fact, um, a few reached out and asked, you know, during this time, could they continue on and keep exploring with us on um, some of the topics of embryology, to which I was like, yes, of course. Uh, That's always kind of been how our school year has ended with our seniors in GBBE. They're always invited back to the school to do laboratories. They're kind of part of the the alumni group, if you will, at that point. And, uh, we enjoy having them back to do the labs with us and, and explore. See, that's just to the point where it's not just about learning the material, but there's a sense of community there, which is something that's so important to in-class, in-person instruction. So we're and, gonna, yes. No, I was gonna say that's exactly been, um, I think my biggest hurdle is how to maintain that aspect of community throughout this experience. So what do the classes usually look like compared to how they have changed since they've been online? Well, um, once spring break uh, ends and we return back to school for GBBE, especially we are in laboratory for almost six weeks straight doing the uh, unknown laboratory with bacteriology where students receive two vials of two different species of bacteria considered to be patient A and B, and that's like their infection. And they're tasked with keeping the patient alive and testing them or the identity of their unknown for three weeks total. Um, So to recreate that into a learning experience online was pretty challenging. And we talked about how you don't get that sense of community uh, to the fullest extent through online, even though there is an attempt, but I mean, teaching through zoom, are there any pros and cons that come to the front of your mind? You'd mentioned laboratories and how it's kind of hard to do that when everyone's in their own space. Well, uh, in zoom, what I tried to do is, um, we had a couple of all group meetings with like the entire GBBE, um, community. And, and that was really tough. I mean, you're talking like almost 90 students on a Zoom call and trying to get uh, feedback and, and see emotion. It, it just, it's nearly impossible. So, um, you know, trial and error and dialed back on that and met then a couple of times just by class. Um, and we actually did form groups for the unknown laboratory. And with that then I utilized within Zoom, there's breakout rooms. So I created little breakout rooms where I could put group members together and it's a cool feature because then you as the, um, as the host have the ability to jump from room to room. And, and that was great because then I could just kind of pop in and say hello. And 
I had them make team names and, you know, get all creative and super nerdy and, and funny at the same time. So we tried real hard to, to maintain that, um, you know, and I think that was during like super cold time, you know, after spring break when it was like, what, snow again? Um, so it felt good to see people and, and talk and chat. And, and then they, they did collaborate. So I know there was a lot of um, outside of my hosting that they went above and beyond and formed groups to collaborate with. So, yeah. Now you have created something of a vast network of former students. At least that's the way I see it. I mean, we did a video feature on this a little <laughs> over a year ago, but for anyone who isn't aware, you host a reunion for GBBE of former students and they come back and they talk to, with your current students. Uh, what is this and why is this important to you? It is so incredibly important to me because I feel that there's a sense of responsibility to provide current students with information about what's available for them in terms of college experience, uh, research experiences, uh, job experiences, and when they return back, you know, it, it's always great to see the smiles and then we, we look at old photos and things um, and talk about the good old times. Uh, but then to see them share what they've learned and take the information that students learned or were at least exposed to in my class and apply it later on in life. It's just like the best gift ever to have that kind of feedback. And at that point in the school year, my current students know, they know where they'd like to try to go to school. They want to talk to people who've already been there. They're interested in, you know, what classes are best to take and, uh, you know, what were your struggles and, and then an opportunity to share and learn. So I learn a bunch just by watching their presentations as well. And what career fields are these former students? What have they gone on, gone into? Is it like a lot of uh, variety in that? Actually, yes. Um, of course, research in all field science. Um, there's a large group of people that, you know, go medicine. Um, and there's some that are in genetic research. Um, I have had some students come back with experience with, with cancer research and, you know, uh, dentistry, I mean, name off all the different, the medical fields. But on the other side, I've had some students go into engineering and they'll come back and they'll, they'll speak to engineering. I've had a few students who have decided to, to double major and go in a field of not only just a science-based career, but like pair it with uh, business. And to see that uh, collaboration in the two different fields and, and have them speak to the effect of how that made them more marketable in the job search, um, it really does kind of get everybody thinking about their possibilities when they enter into college. I really love that event that you throw on. It's, it's so beneficial, I think, because having a network is extremely beneficial in many fields. And with recent events, we've got thousands of people job searching and interviewing 100% online. So what will you say to students moving forward in terms of making those connections, whether it be in person or entirely virtual? You know, what's something you want students to know about the future of being connected? How vital is that? What I want them to know is that even though you can't maybe attend an event where you see people face to face, there's so much support and opportunity within um, online experiences. Um, you know, join a couple of different groups uh, that host webinars um, or podcasts to learn a little bit more about what's happening within the world. Um, and, you know, it gets me thinking about the potential for what next year might look like if we can't do a face-to-face -face interaction. Um, we've already, as a GBBE unit, attended a um, career seminar that was put on by Oakland Schools, where we were able to speak with um, a molecular biologist talking about um, coronavirus. So, like that was a wonderful experience. And once we had that experience, lo and behold, that individual who was speaking to us is actually friends with a former GBBE student. And now I have a greater connection. And um, 
he has agreed to visit with us again as a personal uh, experience for my class. And then the students have a better opportunity to ask more questions rather than it being like an Oakland Schools event. So it's really great to be connected and to continue to reach out and uh, write a few emails and you never know in this time frame what's going to pop. Very well said. I agree 100%. So why do you want students to take science classes like yours and to pursue a career in that general area? I am always been, and I've always been intrigued by um, inquiry and discovery. And I find it extremely inspirational. The more, you know, star kind of like should fly over all the time. Um, I think that, Truly, as you have more information about how your body works, what's going on in the world from perspective of like this pandemic, even I mean, like, my class teed up perfectly for like this, if it was a laboratory, um, what we could do and to just be educated and better understand the science to be able to read at a higher level and then learn something and apply it to a new experience. It's just going to continuously push you forward in your efforts of discovery. And really, on top of that, if you look at um, being essential, it's such an essential career. Like the need for an education in science will always provide you with employment. What's something that you are going to take away from this experience as we look towards the next school year and years to come? Oh, as a teacher, um, how important it is to, to continue to communicate um, and collaborate. Uh, I think that it's something that I took for granted, like open the door and talk to somebody next door, send a quick note. But it, now we've turned into oops, like having meetings about meetings, about um, creating things, the collaboration between um, even like school to school and within teacher to teacher within the department, it's always kind of been there, but now it's really there. Like we want to make sure that when we have our students for, you know, the couple of hours that we have them during our, our work week, we want it to be extremely meaningful. Um, we want it to be something that is inspiring and it's not just like checking off a box. So experiences like that, has always been something at the forefront, but to try to take eight weeks of learning and put it down into maybe like 16 hours. It's just intense. Um, or I guess 10 weeks of learning, but it, it really is been, or that has been the biggest um, challenge um, for me. Absolutely. Mrs. Peterson, thank you so much for doing this. I'm glad I could twist your arm into <laughs> meeting up with me virtually today. I always love getting the chance to catch up with you being my former teacher. I really can't believe it has been almost 10 years. So I'll have to come visit your classroom again once we're in the buildings. But until then, I am wishing you all the best. Likewise. Thank you so much. Listeners, before we go, don't forget, you can subscribe to TSD World Class Podcasts on your favorite podcast platform, where you'll find all kinds of content and resources. You can also connect on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for listening and be well.